Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Triple N Media. I am Nick Nickam and this cardiology seminar is brought to you by Triple N Media. Our YouTube channel has more than 200 cardiology lectures. You are welcome to watch them at your leisure. We also kindly request you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you will be notified of uh, any new additions to our cardiology lectures. I also have a cardiology rotations manual consisting of almost 180 pages of useful information for people rotating through cardiology service so you can enhance your understanding of cardiology patients and how we manage patients in the hospital. The feature presentation is troponin I, T or C. Which one is important and what does troponin do in terms of uh, diagnosis and predicting what's going to happen in patients with uh, various types of cardiac uh, diseases. So let us begin with the feature presentation. Troponin, as you know, is one of the components of the sarcomere of the myocardial fibers. As you know, the myocardium has the actin and the myosin. The myosin which slides in and out of this actin strands and here on the sarcomere is a thin filament on top of that there are three different kinds of troponins troponin i which is an important component of a myocardial troponin we have troponin c which is also found in muscle and so it's not quite useful in diagnosing evidence of myocardial injury or myocardial infarction and troponin T is specific to the myocardium and the elevated troponin T levels may signify some degree or some kind of myocardial injury. It could be physical, it could be inflammatory or it could be related to ischemia or necrosis. And these take part during the contraction and relaxation during the contraction and relaxation phases but most importantly the high sensitivity troponin levels have very high diagnostic predictive and prognostic values remember now most of us think troponin is for diagnosing but in reality it is useful for predicting the outcomes and also prognosticating based on the troponin levels what can we expect in the coming days and weeks in patients with uh, acute coronary syndromes heart failure or post-operative cardiac problem so keep in mind this is not only useful in acute coronary syndrome patients it is also useful in patients with uh, ongoing heart failure symptoms and also in the post-operative phase when patients have cardiac symptoms Troponin is a very important diagnostic and prognostic indicator. Just an overview of what happens to the troponin levels when there is, say, for acute coronary syndrome, which may be due to myocarditis, it may be related to coronary ischemia or a demand ischemia in patients with excess demand. There is release of this troponin from the myocardial fibrils into the serum. So the troponin level can go up during the course of an acute myocardial injury within two to three hours. Let's make note of that. The troponin levels can go up within a couple of hours or two to three hours. That's where triaging patients come into the picture. And it reaches a peak by about uh, 36 hours from there it gradually comes down and it may last for six to seven days before it reaches the baseline level. So nowadays we don't even use uh, myoglobin. CKMB is measured but we, most of the emphasis is on high sensitivity troponin levels. So let us focus on that high sensitivity troponin T levels. And as you can see, the troponin, the high sensitivity, high sensitivity troponin is so accurate in ruling in or ruling out myocardial ischemia. I mean, it could be injury, but it, ruling out non-cardiac issues and identifying high-risk 
population is quite impressive. If the troponin levels are normal, that is like below 3 nanograms per liter or zero, then the chances are you are dealing with a non-cardiac issue. However, if the troponin levels are slightly elevated above the 99th percentile, then you need to follow them with uh, another test be between three to four hours to see if the troponin levels are going up. If the troponin levels are going up, that's an indication that you could be dealing with an ongoing myocardial ischemia or myocardial necrosis. On the other hand, if you see you start off with a troponin level which is uh, like 99th percentile suggests you have significant myocardial damage, then you are dealing with myocardial necrosis or an acute STEMI or not end STEMI. So this helps us to sort of triage and see which way do we go when a patient presents with chest pain for the first time with no known history of heart disease and you get these levels and in the next couple of slides I'm going to show you how we can actually walk through as to how we differentiate these patients in the emergency room or in an acute situation and see how the clinical decision is made. Okay, here is a chart which I was talking about. When someone comes with an acute coronary syndrome without ST segment elevation. So we are talking about uh, a patient with non-specific chest pain or atypical chest pain with no EKG changes. So that's an important point. The high sensitivity troponin level less than 99th percentile, like I showed you in the previous slide, if it's less than three nanograms per liter that is supposed to be in the 99th percentile of being normal. So the, if the onset of symptoms are greater than six hours, uh, you can reasonably discharge or do a stress test on this patient and triage them after their stress test based on the results. Whereas if the symptoms are less than six hours, uh, you repeat the test in three hours. See, remember I was telling you about how the troponin level goes up uh, within a few hours. So if the troponin level is borderline like 0.3 or 0.4, you repeat the level in three hours. If the troponin levels are stable, then we can evaluate the patient. If the patient is uh, pain free and if the gray score is less than 140, we can rule out significant uh, myocardial damage and then follow up them with the appropriate tests. Whereas if the troponin levels go up in three hours, we need to consider further cardiac evaluation. On the other hand, if a person comes with a troponin level which is in the 99th percentile of uh, predicting myocardial damage, if that is the case, repeat the test in about three hours. If there's a significant rise or fall in troponin level by 20%, then we proceed for invasive strategy. Whereas if the troponin level is stable, you say you come with a patient with a level of troponin five and it remains five, it's not changing. And if the patient is stable, then we can look at doing other tests like echocardiography, laboratory tests, maybe a chemical stress test, using nuclear imaging, CT or MRI. So this helps us to sort of triage these patients, taking a patient from the emergency room, evaluating them, and based on their symptoms, confidently sending them home to sending these patients directly to the cardiac catheterization lab for those who have a high suspicion of uh, myocardial ischemia or necrosis with continued elevation of the troponin levels. Here is a chart which talks about the, the predictive value of the troponin in patients with acute coronary syndrome, myocardial infarction, or heart failure. Let's talk about if their troponin levels are less than five nanograms per liter. This is where 99% of them are not related to a cardiac issue. So they have a pretty good prognosis, whereas those patients who come to the emergency room with uh, 50 nanograms of uh, 
high sensitivity troponin levels. You know you're dealing with myocardial necrosis or myocarditis or some kind of damage to the myocardium, including excess demand that can elevate the troponin levels. But when the troponin levels reach like 100 or 1000, you are almost certain you are dealing with an acute myocardial infarction. And the higher the troponin levels, the greater the myocardial damage and the prognosis in those patients is much worse compared to those with lower levels of uh, high sensitivity troponin level. Okay, here is a, a different way of looking at how we triage patients, which is basically a sort of similar to the one we saw. Here's a study that actually looked at this involving 1,261 patients. They triage by single cutoff. If the troponin level was less than five, their negative predictive value was like almost 100%. Their sensitivity was 100%. And these people were treated medically. Whereas if the troponin levels were greater than 60, and these are patients who are sort of ruled in for myocardial ischemia or infarction, and they followed the more aggressive pathway. If the troponin levels were less than four to begin with, and then they were followed up with a repeat troponin levels in three hours, if the troponin levels are less than five, they were followed medically. But if the troponin levels uh, came down, that means uh, the chances of having significant uh, heart disease were low. If the troponin levels were low to start with and, and they do not go up or they go down, that's an indication that you're not dealing with uh, any critical ischemic heart disease. Whereas uh, if the troponin levels are, are going up, you observe these patients. With a pa if a patient comes with a troponin level of 60 nanograms to start with, and then after an hour, the troponin level either goes up or goes down, that means we have an evolving myocardial ischemia or infarction, and obviously they fall in the high risk group, which needs uh, invasive approach and this is a different way of looking at it combining not only the troponin levels but also the EKG change. If you have a patient with a normal EKG and the troponin levels are normal, you are dealing with a non-cardiac issue. If there are minor changes in the STT changes but the troponin levels at one and three hours are normal then you know you're dealing with a non-cardiac issue whereas if you have EKG changes and the troponin levels are border then you follow up with the observation and repeat levels if the repeat levels are increasing then you are dealing with the unstable angina but if the repeat levels are not going up then it is uh, probably not uh, acute coronary syndrome Whereas if you have ST depression or ST elevation and the troponin levels are high to come begin with and they change either up or down, then you are dealing with an evolving acute uh, end STEMI or STEMI. Here is uh, a chart showing the prognostic value of uh, patients who come to the clinical scenario where their troponin levels are uh, like this, less than five nanograms values 5 to 9 nanograms and values 10 to 14 nanograms and as you can see the patients with less than 5 nanograms over a period of 5 years had a much better survival rate compared to those who had uh, like here blue which is this one very high levels of uh, high sensitivity troponin their prognosis was considerably worse than those with the normal troponin levels. Same thing when you are in the intermediate group, it falls in the intermediate range, but still 4% all-cause mortality. And these are the groups where we need further evaluation to look for evidence of myocarditis or myocardial injury or inflammation 
or reversible myocardial ischemia and if we find that that is the situation that's the condition that we need to address so the troponin levels not only help us to diagnose the presence or absence of significant uh, acute coronary syndromes it also helps us to predict who is going to have a very definite in incidence of a myocardial infarction and who does not have cardiac causes for mild elevation of troponin levels and of course the prognostic value depending upon what the level of the troponin is and what do you expect uh, three four five years down the line based on the initial troponin levels okay ladies and gentlemen this is a very quick overview of uh, troponin and how we use that at bedside and uh, how we predict and also use that for prognostic uh, value if you'd like to get a copy of my cardiology rotations in mania just send me an email to dr nick nickham at gmail.com and this cardiology seminar has been brought to you by triple n media and we have more than 200 lectures on cardiology topics you are welcome to watch them and please do subscribe to our youtube channel and this is triple n media i'm dr nick nickham a cardiologist from houston texas thank you so much